Okay, today is Tuesday, September 26th, and we've got some new Guild Wars 2 news. So, starting off, World Polish. Reduce the amount of healing Twisted Mender enemies applied to their allies. It is now a flat value rather than a percentage of the target's maximum health. Fixed an issue that caused a mismatch between the priority strike rotation and related achievements at the Eye of the North to surrogate during certain time frames. I have reported this myself for months. Uh, what that was is if in-game you go to your achievement panels and you look at what the daily strike is, it might say Bone Skinner. You go to the portal in Eye of the North and it would say Whisper of Dormat. It would say something completely wrong. Um, basically, one of them was out of sync. Um, glad to see that finally fixed. That one's been there for a while. Fixed an issue that prevented players from joining party members who entered a home instance or son's refuge via the Asura Gate in Eye of the North. Uh, fixed an issue that could cause meta event entries in the Eye of the North to be available for a longer period than expected. Zizel and Gal Wrath the Undying have been promoted to legendary rank. Uh, fixed an issue that caused the Caning Blackout meta event in New Caning City to occasionally stall while players were capturing the Breaker Boxes. I wasn't familiar with that one. Cryptus Rifts have been reported in additional locations. Ember Bay, Frostgorge, Sound, Iron Marches, Seitung Province, and Verdant Brink have had it, uh, been added to the Cryptus Rift weekly rotation pool. That is awesome. I hope they work. Um, when Soto came out in the like second week, so this was a couple weeks ago, I tried doing rifts in the other locations, and I kept hitting bugs with them, where like I would use a motivation, and like you know when you close a portal, you're supposed to get some reward. If you use a motivation, you're supposed to get a second reward. If you close a portal, use a motivation, and it's also like the achievement, you might get three. There were many I would close, and I'd get zero. It was like when I was not an Amnitus or Skywatch Archipelago, I would sometimes just get no rewards at all. So I ended up just not trusting them outside of there. So I'd have to try it again. But keep a close eye on your loot for the first rift or two that you close outside of the Soto zones just to make sure it's working uh, before you, you know, do like an hour without paying attention or something is my advice on that. Um, additional achievements have been added for the new rift hunting locations. Skywatch Archipelago. Increase the duration of active checkpoints for the Rise and Shrine achievement. The Junior Archivist position in Wizard's Ascent is now marked on the map. Fixed an issue that caused chest icons to persist on the compass after the chests were opened. Fixed an issue that could cause players using bellows to retain their bundles after completing the Gather Essence of All around Drachnar's Light event. Fixed an issue that could prevent players from obtaining the special action skill to cleanse corruption at the end of the unlocking of the Wizard Tower meta event. Wizard's Tower added a fishing hole at the Wizard's Respite Point of Interest. Flute, rejoice! Fixed an issue that could cause the targets in the Skyscale Target Practice Adventure to disappear too early for players who began the adventure shortly before it became unavailable. Interesting, I hadn't heard about that one. I've done that adventure a couple of times, um, mainly for the achievements uh, and like getting the, the Soto Cryptus Skyscale, I think, required either Soto Skyscale or Soto Cryptus Skyscale required it. So I did it a few times for that. I never hit this issue. Amnitus. Adjusted the location of the Spellcrafting Workshop Starlight Lantern. That's a mouthful. To be closer to the point of interest. Fixed an issue that caused the Museum of Curiosity's Main Gallery Starlight Lantern to be positioned inside a wall. Fixed an issue that caused chest icons to persist on the compass after the chests were opened. This was very annoying, especially at the end of the Archipelago meta. Um, there was a whole bunch of treasure chests in a room, and some of them would be on your floor, some would be one floor up or two floors up, and, you know, when you get close to them, there's a little arrow on your mini-map that tells you if they're above you or if they're on the same level as you or if they're below you, but those arrows wouldn't appear um, when you're in range of all the boxes. So it's hard to plan a route around the room and get them all without going up and down and, you know, bouncing around with the sky scale. Um, and on top of all that, the treasure chest icons wouldn't disappear when you open them, so you might come back to the same chest more than once. It was very annoying. Um, glad that that is getting addressed. Updated Dagda's astral projection visual effects during the finale of the Defense of Amnitus meta event. Is that the yoga? They, 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 they buffed the yoga. Okay. <laughs> Reduce the movement speed of the Nova launch skill and Amnitus to fix an issue that caused players to clip through walls. Uh, okay. Fix an issue that caused Escort Zizel and the Concoctions to the Greenhouse event to fail before the final Concoction dropped. I've only done that chain one time. Um, just because, honestly, I, I didn't enjoy it that much. Uh, so I did not know about this bug. I didn't experience it that one time. 
Fixed an issue that could cause some ambient dialogue to continue playing during the Defense of Amnitus meta event. How about the ambient dialogue that plays when you're trying to get your first quest in Skywatch Archipelago and there's 15 NPCs talking in the background? Uh, <laughs> Lazy Peon commented on that, and I 100% agree with him on that point. You need to... Tone some of that down. I don't know, like reduce the range that you hear the NPCs or something. Because like when you're first into first into the archipelago and you're getting your quest, you can hear like everyone talking over each other. Um, but okay, it's a start. Coconut's level has been corrected. What? Is this an actual coconut or is there an NPC named Coconut? I don't know. I don't know Coconut. Uh, fixed an issue that allowed players to kill cats in the Bastion of Knowledge. Oh no! Connor is back! The spirit of Connor lives on in Guild Wars 2. Oh, Lord. Uh, fixed an issue that caused players to become stuck in action camera mode during the Help Livia Escort the Relics by shooting at Cryptus from the Magic Platforms event. Uh, okay. Coconut is a dog at, in Amnitus. Oh, okay. Uh, General. Worm enemies below champion rank now correctly drop the item needed to progress Sky Scale Medicine Masker Achievement. Oh, thank you. Okay, so this was so annoying. Uh, for the, I believe it was the Cryptus Sky Scale, there was an one of the steps of it was go do this one achievement. And the achievement was called Medicine Masker. And you had to get 250 worm meat. And the achievement says something like, uh, you know, kill worms to get meat. Uh, bit, you know, champion and higher worms will have more meat. Okay, so first I went and killed some worms, nothing. And I needed 250 of it, and I killed like 10. I'm like, oh my god, this is gonna take forever. So I went and killed veteran worms, nothing. So then I went and joined a group doing the Great Jungle Worm and got 90. Uh, so then I went into a dungeon that had champion worms and got zero. And so then I just did great the, the champion jungle worm three times to get 90, 90, and 90 to finish it. Um, I've also been told Triple Trouble works. But the achievement made it sound like any worms would do, but in practice, it was like I had to fight champion ones or world boss ones. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I didn't mention that the, the, the veteran ones didn't drop any. Champion dropped like eight, and then the world boss dropped like 90. That's what it was. Uh, so, yeah, glad to see this getting fixed. Um, Skywatch Archipelago, protector of achievement uh, objective text have been updated to match respective events. Additionally, if the event is part of an event chain, it will be listed as part of the objective. Amnitus, the hint text for the Fantastic Flying Foxes achievement has been updated. I found out about the foxes in Soto, and they apparently existed in End of Dragons, and I, I never came across them. <laughs> I never gave it. They're so well hidden, I never came across them. Fractals. Silent Surf. Fixed an issue that caused all party members to be defeated when, en when engaging the first boss in challenge mode. Yes, that was a bug. Uh, that made it to where... Um, you could not get the achievement for kill the boss on the first try without dying. While that bug was in effect, because he would kill you instantly uh, when you approached him, you could not get the uh, no-fail achievement during that time. Some Qua fixed an issue that could cause the final boss to get stuck repeating an animation during the fire first phase. Yep, from 66% health to zero? I think she just stands there. And Shattered Observatory fixed an issue that caused Artsariv to be interrupted by damage after phase transitions at 66 and 33. Um, Artsariv's bug was similar to the Sunqua one. From, like, for, for a large chunk of her health, she would just stand there. Oh, sorry, it was 166. I said it backwards, yeah. From 166, she would just stand there. So, Artsariv... And the thing, the thing was, is these bugs were in play in the game last week during the Fractal Rush event. And they didn't get... I was really shocked they started Fractal Rush with those bugs there. And it's a week later, and now they're they're fixing those. I'm glad they're fixing them. They needed to be fixed. Um, it was a bit silly that the bosses would just stand there and let you kill them. But I, it's a bummer that we went through the entire Fractal Rush event with these bosses just sitting there like AFK, letting you kill them. Um, okay. Uh, personal story. Fixed an issue that blocks Silvari players from completing the Hearts and Minds story step in Guild Wars 2 Heart of Thorns if they disconnected from the game or re-entered the entrance after the Mordremoth fight. I only play Goblin characters, so I didn't know about this. Updated the requirements for progressing the Guild Wars 2 Soto Fractal Push story achievement. Rather than successfully completing the final stage of the meta event in Skywatch Archipelago, progress will be awarded for participating in any of the meta events. 
Uh, fixed an issue that prevented second Hunter Camilla from skipping certain dialogue steps for players who had already received the one-time gift of the Uncommon Cryptus Motivation. Uh, adjusted players' downed behavior in the Treachery Story set in Guild Wars 2 Soto to prevent issues during the cinematic. Um, I'm wondering what exactly they changed. I think Lazy Peon might have uh, had that issue where he kept going downstate and then the boss would just stand there and just stand over him and then he'd bandage back up and the boss would smack him down and then just stand there just staring at him. Like, it was it was quite the power move. Uh, the, the, the boss was just kind of like showing him who's boss. And then after like four or five times, the boss finally continued. All right, so profession skills. Before I even go over this section, a couple of quick notes here. Uh, we were t I've mentioned recently in a recent video that the damage in the game is too high right now. Uh, you know, P Guild Wars 2 is a horizontal progression game. There was level 80 content at release, which was like an ore. There was level 80 content in Heart of Thorns, which was like raids. Uh, there was, you know, level 80 content in Path of Fire, which was the raids there, and so, and so on and so on. However, the damage that was impressive in Heart of Thorns is half of what is impressive in End of Dragons. So they... You know, Challenge Mode Harvest Temple requires way higher DPS than Veil Guardian, but they're both level 80 content. And right now, because we've got so many classes doing over 40,000 damage per second, we are melting many old raid bosses, which are supposed to still be current content, in like half the time they're supposed to be done. We're skipping mechanics entirely. In PvP, in a tab targeting MMO, we've got people coming out of stealth and one-shotting other people. You know, it, it's, of course, you know, they'll just say just dodge, but it's like you did it from stealth. You know, so it's, the damage is like the highest it's ever been at this point. Okay, so on that note, let's see what they're going to do. Profession skills. The goal of these changes is to address, oh, hold on, actually, I'm not done. The number one thing, whenever I talk about this topic that people say in the comments under the video, is, well, you don't speak for most of the player base, we're not all that good. Look, go to my LI, if you need a build for your character that does like three buttons and does 30,000 damage per second, check the low intensity guide section. I got you covered, okay? Like, there's, there's, it's, if you just spend a few minutes setting up the build, it's not a, it's not a big deal. It's truly not a big deal. Oh yeah, I'm actually going to be making another one very soon after I see if these uh, these nerfs changed it. I've got another one for Spellbreaker that does like 25k DPS with like three keys and one for Deadeye with Daggers that does 30k with three keys. That might change based on these nodes, but if you are just looking for a build to unga bunga damage, every class has one that's just a few buttons. And I say every cl every like main profession, not elite spec. Cat there's no hope for Catalyst. It's Catalyst and Weaver cannot be simplified. Don't even think about those. Everything else, we got that. Uh, okay. All right. The goal of these changes is to address a number of builds that are overperforming in PvE. We'll keep a close eye on the impact of these changes and may make additional tuning adjustments as needed to bring any overperforming builds back in line before the next regular balance update. Um, one thing that uh, concerns me here is if I do Control F PvP, there's zero matches. So nothing in here is related to PvP. This is all PvE changes. Uh, and one World View World note. Relic of Akeem, which has been very problematic lately. Reduce the Torment and Confusion stacks from 3 to 2 in PvE. Relic of Fireworks, reduce the damage bonus from 10% to 7 in PvE and Worldly World. Relic of Mabon, fix an issue that caused this relic to affect might stacks applied by the user instead of might stacks applied to the user. Redu <laughs> to affect might stacks apply, uh, applied by the user instead of might stacks to the user. Reduce. Wait, really? Uh, instead of my tax applied to the user? Dude, I bought this relic on three different characters, which sucked because it's soulbound to each character, to keep trying to get it to work on different supports, and it was never intended to work on supports. That's awesome. Reduce the internal cooldown from three to two seconds. Uh, okay. Wildfire. Reduced power coefficient from 0.66 to 0.44 in PV. Okay, hold on a sec. Okay, literally every change after this point is PvE only, so I'm not going to say that. Wildfire reduced power coefficient from 0.66 to 0.44. Elements of Rage reduced the damage bonus from 10 to 7. Weaver's Prowess reduced the damage bonus from 10 to 5. Empowering Auras reduced the damage bonus per stack from 3 to 2. Deploy Jade Sphere reduced power coefficient from 0.4 to 0.35 in PvE only. 
Engineer Poison Dart Volley, that's pistol two. Reduced poison duration from nine seconds to seven in PVE. Blow Torch, reduced burning stacks from four to three, that's the pistol five. Corona Burst from Hollowsmith, reduced burning duration from five to three. Photon Blitz, reduced burning duration from three to two. So Condi Engineer getting nerfs. Mesmer, where can I find three button specs? Um, there's quite a few of them. Also, uh, Snow Crows and Hardstuck have many as well. Uh, Mesmer, Jagged Mind, reduced bleeding duration from five to 4.5 seconds. They, they, they're taking half a second off of it. Um, Necromancer, Devouring Darkness, reduced torment duration from six to four. Doomfire, reduced burning duration from three seconds to two when the Scourge Elite specialization is equipped. Sadistic Searing, reduced burning from two, to, uh, from two stacks for five seconds to one stack for four seconds. Demonic Lore, reduced burning duration from three seconds to one second. Desert Shroud, reduced torment duration from 10 seconds to five seconds. Sandstorm Shroud, reduced torment duration from 10 seconds to five. And Voracious Arc, reduced torment duration from 10 to seven. So lots of nerfs to Necro, uh, specifically Scourge was one of the highest parsing builds. Again, I'm talking about like the top players, but you know, the, the scale kind of goes across the whole player base. Uh, the Scourge PVE was very, very, very strong, and they're trying to address that there. Um, we'll see how it turns out. Ranger, Furious Strength, reduced the damage bonus from 15% to 10%. Neurotoxin Burst, um, that is the when a Untamed uses a Soul Beast Dagger and does an Ambush. Reduces Bleeding Sacks from 3 to 2 in PvE, reduced Poison Sacks from 5 to 2 in PvE. Revenant Mist Swing, reduced the Power Coefficient from 1.0 to 0.7 in PvE. Mist Slash, reduced Power Coefficient from 1.1 to 0.8. Arcing Miss reduced power coefficient from 1.3 to 1.2. Miss Unleash reduced power coefficient from 2.0 to 1.6. Blood Bane Path reduced bleeding duration from 8 seconds to 6. Seven Shot reduced torment duration from 6 seconds to 4. Elemental Blast reduced burning from 3 stacks for 5 seconds to 2 stacks for 4 seconds. Leviathan Strength, increased damage bonus from 10 to 15... Increase! So, okay, not a nerf, guys. Leviathan Strength, increased damage bonus from 10% to 15%. Forerunner of Death, increased damage bonus from 15% to 25%. Uh, Thief, Malicious Shadow Squall, reduced po bonus poison duration per stack of Malice from 25% to 20% in PvE only. Twilight Combo, reduced Poison and Torment duration from 8 seconds to 5. Shadow uh, Strength of Shadows, reduced Torment damage bonus from 25% to 20% in PvE. Warrior, uh, last class. Fan of Fire, reduced Burning duration from 5 seconds to 3. Flaming Fury, uh, sorry, Flaming Flurry, reduced Burning duration from 5 seconds to 2.5. Scorched Earth, reduced Burning duration from 4 seconds to 2.5. Flames of War fixed an issue that caused the skill's pulses to inflict additional stack of burning for one second in PvE. Blood Reaction increased the power to condition damage conversion from 10% to 15% in PvE only. Um, who's missing? Guardian? They didn't do anything to Guardian. World versus World. A new merchant has been added to the Eternal Battlegrounds, Desert Borderlands and Alpine Borderlands and Armistice Bastion that sells exotic equipment with selectable attributes in exchange for gold and badges of honor. So you can get some badges of honor playing World v. World and then get full stat selectable exotic if you wish to going forward. That is awesome, but surprising. I'm surprised to see them do this, but that is actually awesome. I think that's a good thing. Um, the Armorsmith, Weaponsmith, and Karma equipment merchants in World v. World maps have been removed. Uh, improvements and updates. Fixed an issue that caused duplicate daily World v. World objectives to occasionally be displayed in the Wizard's Vault. And that is the end of these notes. Let me hit F5 just to see if they added anything else. Uh, lots of confused and sad emotes. Uh, that's it for that, okay? Going over to the game, let's talk about new stuff in here. There is one new item in the shop right now. The Astral Manticore Skyscale Mounts. Uh, skin for your Skyscale if you want it. This chunky boy here. And this is another one that's in the box that you could choose. That's him. All right, so that's new in the store. Currently 1,600 gems. 
Uh, additionally, new stuff, if we go to achievements and go to bonus events, I don't know why it's not in the patch notes, but World v. World Rush starts today. Everyone got a mail today telling you to go talk to a guy in Lion's Arch, and it's about World v. World Rush. Uh, just by talking to him, you get this achievement here, and then there's achievements for doing the rush. Um, you only showed two of the three skins? Okay, uh, hang on just a second here. Um, ba -ba -bum. Let's see, what was the third one? Oh, there we go, there's the third one. Apologies. Okay, so that's the third one. I like his eyes. Okay, so World v. World Rush has started, if you want to get in on that. Uh, Black Lion Stolen Goods Recovery Event is in week three. So if you missed week one, week two, too bad. Week three has begun, so you can go get the rewards for week three, uh, which can help you get toward a bag slot expansion and a Black Lion weapons voucher if you haven't already done that. It's worth doing. It just takes a few minutes of running around and uh, talking to some script. So, uh, easy, easy loots. So, that is pretty cool. Uh, additionally, we have also noticed there is new stuff in the Wizard's Vault. How are you holding up? Because I'm a potato. Dallin out. Terrible timing. Uh, why is there no section for Guardians? Because Guardians are, Guardians are completely balanced. Learn to play. All right, so there is new stuff in the special section of the Wizard's Vault, possibly the other sections as well, but there are more options in here that you can do to get a crap ton of AA, or ah, if you prefer to call them that, uh, if you wish to do so. So know that that is there as well. All right, that is all of the new stuff I have found so far. I have checked the Black Line Chest and the Black Line Weapon Specialist. Those have not changed yet. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, after this, I'm going to be testing the recent LI videos that I have done to see if they have changed dramatically and see if I need to either take any down or add any comments. Because if there's a minor change, like, you know, oh, great, you know, great sword Herald now does 29k instead of 30, I'll just pin a note under the video. If it's a major change, I'll re record the video. So I'm going to go check on those. And if you're playing any of those, you know, just, uh, you know, Keep, keep an eye out to see if, uh, if I update that. Uh, if, you know, but if you're playing it, you'll probably test it sooner than I will. All right, that's it. If you got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, put them in the comment section down below. Uh, I am saddened to see that there's nothing about PvP here. I truly am. I think it's good that they're trying to reduce the insane damage of PvE. I do think that is a good thing. It needs to be done in the other game modes as well. Um, like, World v. World Rush is starting, and they're not nerfing the damage of World v. World. So, you know, World v. World and PvP, we're still going to be just popping each other like balloons. Um, I'm sad to see that that's not been addressed yet, and I hope they do soon. But that's just my opinion. <laughs>